Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of the THP Strength Podcast. My name is Isaiah Rivera, and I am working with my partner, John Evans, who is a very smart guy with a master's degree in exercise science. He's interned at everywhere, freaking Olympic training centers. Um, He's trained with Olympic track and field athletes and some of the smartest minds in the athletic training world. And yeah, do you want to introduce me? I would love to. Weighing in 175 pounds, six foot one, with a eight foot one reach, 48 inch vertical. We have Isaiah Rivera, the greatest dunker in the entire world, the only person to hit a 360 behind the back between the legs, a kamikaze, and a double up behind I the back hit the on nine foot eleven and a half. Also, could be ten depending on how far away the tape measure is from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A lot of people get mad about that half inch. Though, so <laughs> careful, we're, we're trading on very dangerous. That's what she said. All right. Uh, so this week's podcast is brought to you by Legion Supplements. One of the biggest questions we get asked is, "How can I improve recovery?" Well, one of the only ways to do this is to give your body more of what it already needs. Increasing bioavailability of these micronutrients can help you help you. In other words, it lets your body do what it already is trying to do during recovery, but better. Use the code THP at checkout at the Legion website, and you will get a discount for that. Uh, second, we want to shout out Hawkins Dynamics. If you're looking for force plates to fact check us, go check them out. They have great leasing options. And finally, if you are trying to get online coaching to jump higher, run faster, look better, be more athletic, improve at your sport, go to thpstrength.com. Get women. Get women. <laughs> <laughs> um, today's topic is jumping every day. Is it beneficial for your vertical? Um, I guess we should start with our personal experiences with it. I would love to. John, what is your experience with jumping every day? Yes. So I didn't do this. I was after the wave of the Jordan Kilgannon, Joel Smith article. And I, that article was written in 2014, I think. Right. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. So I was maybe 2013. So I was a freshman or sophomore in college and I assumed that I would never really jump again because I had so much back pain and herniated discs and I was just like, this isn't worth it. I'm going to have nerve pain the rest of my life. Just screw this. I don't want to do this. So I kind of like given up on dunking at the time when that article was written. And then I came across it, I think my 2016, I came across it actually because who hasn't read that article, right? And I think it has like millions of views. Does it not? The yeah. article? Um... I'm actually not sure. I'm, I have it here right now, but it doesn't say how many. It was so it was written in June 2013. Yeah. So it would have been. It's about. Wow. It's about to be eight years That's ago. That's crazy. So that article came out. I read it. I found it in 2016 because I like hadn't really been studying dunking other than. I, I actually started looking at dunking again whenever you guys were all in Florida just posting sessions all the time. And I was like, yeah. how is it possible that Peter. Peter Olson was that his last name? Peter, yeah, it's Olson. Peter Olson at five foot eight is doing an East Bay. What? And these look like legit rim. I was like blown away. And then I saw a video of you doing it, and I was like, "This is stupid! Like, who, what, what is happening in Florida that all of these little blob athletes that don't train, can't lift the weight, and are jumping so much higher than me?" And I got back into dunking, and <laughs> so I read that article, and it was, I, I tried it. And it didn't work. I got knee pain really bad. I jumped higher one day and my knees just got so bad so quickly that it just completely, yeah, it it obliterated me. I think I, I even had like, my idea was, oh, I'll take out the sprinting and I'll put in jumping, right? Kind of a logical think thinking, both very intense things. You're going to take out the elastic volume of sprints. You're going to replace it with jumping and I'll still do squats and all the other training, but I'll just, you were still lifting. What's that? So you were still lifting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tra- oh, trained harder man. than everyone else. Of course I was still lifting. No, I'm playing. Um, I mean, sort of, actually. I was probably training harder than any dunker at the time, but I wasn't even considering myself a dunker. It was just track and field, and then I was just putting dunking yeah. in basically where the track and field stuff was. And, yeah, it got bad really fast. I didn't low rim either. It was just 10 foot, 2 foot, 10 foot, 2 foot jumping on 10 feet, and I knew nothing about jump technique. I was just like, I'll just jump as high as I can. <laughs> And yeah. I started to do some stuff with jumping, but or like jump technique, but I couldn't quite figure it out. I just wasn't as knowledgeable as I am now then. And I, yeah, I got hurt right away. And then I promised basically to never do it again. Went to Altus. My knees still hurt for months and months and months and months and months after that. Didn't know about isometrics. Didn't know about rehab. 
didn't know about load management and then got back into dunking and I think I dunked two or three I think I dunked twice a week after Altus because they were like oh we jump we long jump on Mondays and Thursdays and I never yeah I never tried it again but I started dunking more consistently and I will say that obviously helped a lot but I again I didn't know then what I know now I mean I'm way better at dunking now than I was even then so that's my experience with it I didn't get it as a kid like all these other freak athletes like you and Jordan and whoever else had the privilege to do that (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I maybe dunked once every three months when I was a kid, honestly. Yeah. I think something that is very – like, in order to take advantage of it, and this is this is going to segue into my experience with it, I think it's really important if if someone's going to do it, that they do it when they're, like, like 12, like 11, 12, 13 years old, um, when you're already playing every day and, like, you don't have the, the output to, like, get yourself hurt. Um, and I think that's something Jordan Kilgannon did. I think he started when he was like 12, 12, 13 years old. That's when he started jumping every day. And I feel like that's a big reason why he became so resilient. Cause we, we had this discussion, um, like you and I talked about this. I remember I was at Duke and I was walking into the weight room and you showed me, I think it was, we were talking about Peter and you were like, uh, like Peter Mannion, not Olson. And you were like, yeah, yeah this dude jump super high we should like try to see if he'd be interested in getting coached by us or whatever else like you were telling me about it and you're like i think it's like the key like you have to jump every day if you want to be a freak he's like he's, he's yeah. one of the only guys that's jumping every day like this you know we need to look into this more and, and you asked me and i remember because i was walking to the weight room and you were like do you think this is possible to like integrate and people should do this and we should be doing this with our athletes and this is the conclusion we came to but go ahead go on <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I think it's in order to be a absolute holy crap. There is a huge ass mosquito just looking. Oh my gosh! He's um, like <laughs> inside the. <laughs> <laughs> He's like mm, looking like a snack. <laughs> <laughs> mm, dumb pit. Look at that blood. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Right. This is my this is my freaking ADHD like taking hold yeah. of me. Um, but I think in order to become a freak athlete to have perfect jump technique and just to be a pro dunker level type type athlete even nba player level like there has to have been some point in your kid life where you were just jumping every day you were just trying to jump as high as you can every fucking day like every every athlete that i know that has good jump technique like was like that peter Mannion, right he hadn't hit puberty yet he was trying to jump every single day his technique is on point jordan kuganin same way if you look at any pro dunker i guarantee they were also the same way before they developed they jumped every day staples um staples i feel like i feel like he probably did it just through sports and stuff like that um there's guys that get a late start on dunking itself but I feel like those guys that are still freaks were, were able to... It won't matter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It won't matter. Like, yeah. um, So, and then segueing into my personal experience with it. So, I was... I mean, I've always liked dunking and stuff like that. But I was mainly just a basketball player. And I got a lo- lot of jumping reps through basketball itself. There was never a time where I focus strictly on just trying to jump higher um i would say before i was 16 um it was just i would play basketball and then at the end of basketball i I would try to touch the rim um and like and then i kept trying to dunk like uh probably as soon as i turned 16 that year was when i started like trying to dunk more consistently um in terms of how often i was trying it but when i found this article about jordan kilgannon and this was summer heading into my senior year that's kind of like when my eyes were opened, I was like, whoa, like this guy is around the, he was around the same level where I'm at right now at 16. He jumped seven, eight hours every single day. Uh, that's how he got better. Let, let me try that. So that summer I just started jumping every single day. So it wasn't a thing I was doing since I was like 13, 14. Like it was, I was 16. Mind you, I was a late bloomer. So this was also right when I started hitting like a growth spurt. Uh, so it was like kind of like the perfect storm to make a lot of gains very quickly. And yeah, I just started jumping every single day. My knees ended up getting wrecked in the process. And I think a big reason for that was I didn't start it when I was young, young. Like I was, I was starting to have a lot of like pretty high force outputs. I was also 
weight training at the same time, um, which is also the, the reason I asked you if you were weight training, because I think there's a correlation. Be guys that try to do this while they're trying to lift a lot end up, like, screwing themselves over. Jordan didn't touch a weight until he was, like, I want to say, like, 19 or something like that, 19, 20. That's when he, like, actually started lifting. So he was doing from the age of 13 to, like, 18, 19. All he did was jump every day and wouldn't touch a weight. Yeah. Like, at all. So I think that plays a big role in it because I got to interrupt. Like I, I feel like so many yeah, yeah. guys right now listening to this are going to be like, take all the weights out. I need to just jump. That's all I need to do. And I'm like, hey, listen, yeah. if you're not 13, no. So just, the, <laughs> like, the train left, buddy. Yeah, you can't. You you. It's not the solution. And I, there are other things we can discuss about this, but I just had to say that because I know so many people, myself included, are like, oh, just take all the weights out, jump every day. That's the answer. <laughs> But that yeah. won't work. You will get hurt so fast. Yeah, yeah. Because it's something, a lot of it, too, is like jump technique, for example. Yeah. If you have terrible jump technique, that's another thing that will fuck you up. I, I had pretty bad jump role technique. In this too, I think. Like, as well, I think what? genetics play a huge role in this, too. Massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, injury resilience is something that's genetic as well. Like, uh, when I was reading the book by Stuart McGill, he was saying some people are, are blessed with spines that can handle a lot of flexion. A lot of flexion, uh, but uh, like eventually you get fucked up. But like it'll, you'll be able to go through a few years of not not dealing with any issues. Um, so yeah, Jeanette. So injury resilience is a big, big factor in whether or not you can do this. I would say the only way you can do this is if you have really high injury resilience and your technique is like super, super, super on on point, and if you're relatively young as well, and you progress like, it. And you progress it, yeah. So, again, we keep going back to Jordan Kuganin example. He didn't start by jumping seven, eight hours a day every single day. It was like a thing. It would be like, um, if I remember correctly, I think he, he mentioned this to me, building up to it. But I think it was something where it started a couple times a week. And it wouldn't be at for hours. And then over time, he just started getting addicted to it. And then it just kind of naturally progressed up from there. Uh, so, yeah, so it's not something you want <laughs> you want to just jump into. But. Um, at least for to close it all out, it's something that I'm glad I did, but it was very risky. I could have, I almost quit dunking because my knees were so bad. Um, I ended up having a really, really bad knee pain. Uh, I was only able to handle maybe, I would say actually jumping every single day. It was a period of like three months that, that first summer where I was just jumping every day. And then every couple of weeks I would take a rest. After those three months, that's when knee pain got really bad, and it, it turned into more of a thing. I was doing two days in a row, three days in a row. My knees would hurt, take two, three days off, go back. I could do one session. My knee hurt too bad the next day, take off. It became like it became more like that. And then as time progressed on, then it became a thing where it was like jump three days in a row, now I have to take almost a week off, right, five, five days off, six days off because my knees are so bad. Then come back, and it would be – two days in a row of subpar jumping because my knee again my knees were so bad and it, it just got to the point where I just couldn't I couldn't handle it anymore like I, I really couldn't and then that's when I kind of started working lifting back in and then um then met John focused on the knees so go, go yeah team. it's something that was very risky yeah like there was the I got very lucky because the chances of me succeeding as a pro dunker were very low with how much knee pain I was and how much practice was needed. It was definitely like, I just got lucky. Like I, I just happened to not fuck myself up with irreversible damage. Honestly, <laughs> I remember looking at you, even when you hit the East Bay and thinking, there's no way this kid is a better athlete than me. And I'm not going to lie. I remember thinking that I was 24 or no, I was 22, 23. And I think you were like 18. I think we're what, four years apart. So yeah. I think you were in your freshman year. I remember seeing that and being like, he just did an East Bay. What? No, no, no. I was, I was seventeen. You were seventeen. So I was twenty. Yeah. So you're like probably twenty-one. 22? Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, well, you're twenty-three right now, right? Yeah. I'm twenty-seven, so four years. So if you were seventeen, I was twenty-one. But I think I saw it when I was twenty-two because yeah. I was my second year of grad school. Anyways, I remember seeing it and just being like, or maybe I saw it way later on. I might have seen it like after the fact. You yeah, know? yeah. 
and just thinking because i did I, I came up with my youtube video of all the progress too like later on yeah like i was 18 when that dropped yeah so i think scotty put it on like or it came on dunkademics the video was on dunkademics and i just remember there were a bunch of people around you hit nice bay and like people went crazy and it was just like i think billy posted oh that it. was that definitely would have been when i was 18 okay maybe. yeah billy posted it and i was just i couldn't believe yeah. it i was like there's no way and i remember thinking like I power clean more than this kid. I squat more than this kid. I'm faster than this kid. I do more plyos than this kid. I was like, what is it that he did? I was like, he's not genetically better than me. Just looking at him, there's no way he is cut from a different cloth than I am. I was like, developmentally, yeah. and four years later, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And it, in my brain, it just, I, I could not rationalize. I was like, why? What di- What is he doing that is, is it because he's a two-foot jumper? Is it because, like... He he just genetics and like he's just developing and hitting yeah. puberty. I was like, how, how is this? Possible? And for those that don't know, like I used to look like a baby. No, he, like, it was yes. You you were like, basically wearing. I looked like at seventeen, eighteen. I probably you might have been wearing cargo mentally, pants. I looked like a like a thirteen, fourteen year old. Like you you might have been wearing cargo pants in this. I'm not. No, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm just yeah, like. Like I look developmentally at seventeen, I look like four, like I was fourteen years old. Yeah, like, I, and I remember just being blown away by that and being like, "How the hell is this possible?" And it wasn't until four years later, you know, and and or three, I guess it would have been at that point two or three years later, because that point I got really into dunking because I was like, again, this is when I tried dunking every day and I got hurt. That was what tri- that's actually what triggered it. I'm not that I remember that that is the video that triggered me to get back into the dunk and dunking and research how you did it because I was like there's this doesn't make any sense like I started following yeah. you and following your progression and being like this this is impossible there's just absolutely no way that this is this kid could have made this much progress without proper training and then I started to realize through talking with you that a big part of what made you so good was that you you did that and when I had knee pain and stuff and I was like well you're conflicting with these two things to get this good. You need to dunk every day because that's how he got this good. And he's not genetically more gifted than I am. Obviously now years down the line, I actually don't think you're crazy on that note because this is somewhat related. I actually don't believe that you are as genetically freaky gifted as what other people might assume. Like I look at myself and I look at you and in terms of our progression or outputs, like if you gave me perfectly good hips, I think you and I would be pretty comparable in terms of power clean we're very comparable in terms yeah. of sprints. Like anything that's not limited by mobility basically for me, like sprinting, one foot jumping, um, I don't know, what uh, hang cleans. Like we're pretty plyos. Like we're pretty much neck and neck. You know what I mean? Any yeah. high RFD activity or like high force activity, RDLs, you know, stuff like that. It's like neck and neck. I don't, and I don't consider myself to be a freak athlete at all, especially when you consider like the athletes I've worked with in track that are light years more talented than I am. You know, guys that run... 990 in the 100 meter dash or weightlifters that power clean 170 kg or you know what whatever and i look at you and i'm like yeah he's or looking at jake guys like jay clark like those guys are cut from a different cloth they are another yeah. level of free i would i'm i'm cut from the same cloth that like like jordan is like, jordan <laughs> yeah. is. like it's like that like I feel like we have above average genetics but it's, it's not, not freaky by like, any means i would say the only thing i'm the thing I'm like actually genetically gifted with is probably like my body proportions. Yeah, like I got I got long arms. Yeah, like and I'm and I'm tall. But like, like in terms of output, just raw output, like RFD and power and strength, you're not like yeah. It, it is literally something that was developed over years and years and years. And I think yeah. I always find that really interesting. And also, I think it's kind of a testament to what you're able to achieve if you do things not perfectly because you didn't do things perfectly, but it's really just a, a war of attrition and, and staying dedicated, to, dedicated to it. Yeah. But part of that was that jumping every day and like just kind of putting that all together and bringing it back to really what the topic was here is like the, the ability to stay healthy and the ability to maintain that jumping volume. And by the way, I wasn't trying to shit on you as I just, at the time I was just being as objective as I could sharing that story. Like yeah. it sounds like I was shitting on you, but like you're, injury resilience is i would say if you're going to do it later in life probably the most important thing and oftentimes guys will eventually get hurt they can't sustain doing that for any period of time like jordan is probably one of the only guys and even he eventually got a little bit of knee pain that was able to and that was after he wasn't jumping every day i think but like yeah yeah, that was afterwards but just like there's a point where you can't do it (laughs) it has a very specific role in someone's development 
and it's not another a short, person it's not a shortcut that, either. That's the other thing too. It's yeah, not a shortcut. another person that used to do that. It was T. uh was yeah, T. T T used to jump every single day. But I even, I think even him he like he ended up spraining a ligament in his mm-hmm. knee or something like that. Like um from from jumping every day. He still jumps pretty frequently, but again, it's like once your outputs get high enough that like. Like your body just you can't handle I think it. One like, foot, it's impossible. It's like, I don't. I don't think for one footers it's possible. I I just can't. I can't think of one yeah. person. Maybe South, but Sutherland has issues. Like and he doesn't even jump yeah. every day. He jumps frequently. When he was with the Wizards, was it the Wizards? When it was with the Wizards, it would be every day. And he had problems. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And he was probably managing yeah. his jump volume too. Yeah. Like he wasn't. Jumping it's literally again. a thing. You just you got to do it when you're young. Like, yeah, I think it's like if you're listening like if to I were this right to, now and you're over the age of like. If you're past puberty, it's too late. <laughs> like, what? So if I could, all right. So if I could turn back time, right? If I could be my own big brother, and oh. I knew, and I was trying to train, and I was trying to like train myself. Act, I knew like that. I'm you. Like this is this. I'm I, you. I'm fourteen. And I knew old. little Isaiah. Little Isaiah, you're obsessed with basketball. You want to. You want to dunk. I right? balls. <laughs> I just, let's say. Let's say I'm eleven years old, twelve years old. I would have, one, bought a hoop. For that I could put outside so that you could you could lower it right. How low is it go? Number two, <laughs> I would make sure you can move properly. Like I would make sure you know how to brace your core, stiffen the core, McGill Big Three, that type of thing. That you can hip hinge correctly. That you can sprint. I bro, I used to sprint running on my heels, and I w- it was a stomp. <laughs> like it's like bump, this bump, is what bump, I'm saying. Like, like how old were you when you were doing? Like that? I would. I was doing. The, like I was running. I was sprinting on my heels. I remember the day I found out. I was 15, I believe, because okay. I went I, I went to a track and field six. practice. <laughs> I, I bro, I went to a track and field practice, and then I was there, and I was like, and I was talking to my friend Joshua Villamore, right? He's fast as shit. He's a Hawaiian kid. He's like five five seven, fast as shit, strong as shit. <laughs> and I was talking to him. And I was like, yeah, like I want to get faster and stuff. And then we were at the ta- I went with him to track practice. And then, and then he was like, I think he mentioned that I was running on my heels. And I was like, wait, you're supposed to run on your toes? He's like, yeah, bro. And then I started looking at everybody. And it was like, bah, 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 bah. and everybody's on their toes. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I went, literally, I, we had, we were doing like sprints. It was like, like 40 meter sprints, 30 meter sprints or some shit, like excels. And then I remember I just went, I just finished the sprint. We talked about that. I was like, oh shit, let me try it. I went, ran on my toes, and then the coach goes up to me. He's like, he's like, hey, like, like you wanna, you wanna like go out for the team? Like, I, like I think you're like pretty. T-. From not being looked at, literally in one sprint, I just got like freaking a second faster. And I was like, whoa, like this is the power of running on your toes. Just to be clear, this is why I say I don't think Isaiah is a genetic freak. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you had so, you were po- like pre puberty at that point, right? Like you had not started developing. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't hit a girl. Yeah. I was like five. So six, you were still fat. Yeah. Maybe you are a genetic freak. Maybe I'm just you know, I'm delusional. You're a genetic <laughs> freak. I mean, in your own way, so, in your own way, you are. That's true. Yeah. So like, I, I think with coordination stuff, like it's weird. I'm like, I would do stuff poorly, but if someone tells me the right <laughs> way to do something, I can like, I can do it. Like the right self, way. like guided learning for you, like discovery learning for you was not the best way for you to learn. Someone had this to tell you This is the other thing, bro. It. Well, discovery learning this was This is the other thing. So. I never had like coaches and shit like that like like telling yeah, me how me to either. like everything was like self-taught. Yeah, me too. I self-taught. Yeah. <laughs> it's still self-taught which is a for blessing, me. <laughs> which is a blessing in disguise cuz I think that's what allows me to be a good coach now yeah. is the fact that I had to like teach myself everything. I mean, that's like the same thing um, is true for me, you know what I mean? Like literally PFP I just got a little bit of condromalacia in my knee like recently, but it's gone by the way, cause I'm a fucking G, but <laughs> like that was guided, self-guided learning. I was like, Oh, this is what you have to do to get better. Like the same thing's true of you and, and kind of that process too. i mean, obviously yeah, yeah. Use research to back it up and validate what we're already doing, but then experientially yeah. we validate it. But, um, Oh, but before we, we are <laughs> the ADHD oh, is God. taking hold. Oh God. So, this is why we need that outline. <laughs> yeah. So I would, so I would teach a young me to move properly. I would make sure, right. You can do like sprint development drills. You know how to run properly. You know how to sprint properly. Um, I'd probably look at the jump technique. Um, like after, after basketball practices, I would work on jump technique and stuff like that. And then I would tell, and then I would tell young me, all right, go have a session, do whatever you want. Try to hit a new dunk. Every, every time you dunk, just let's start 30 minutes once a week. And then the ne- next week, probably go 45 minutes. So it's an hour. And then I would start adding sessions and then like, I would make it as fun as possible. And I would probably do that 
like the like just jumping very frequently i'd probably do that until developmentally i, I start growing and like stuff like that and then at that Super point then i would maybe start playing around with with lifting um like because if you from if from 11 to like 14 years of jumping every day you at that point i feel like you have enough jump technique that like you're good for the rest of your life after that you're just out increasing output and also those years you would have built enough coordination doing dunks that you also have the motions for dunks yeah i think um, dude it's tough like if i could do it again as a one foot jumper i tried high jumping almost every day and that actually didn't that that actually didn't make me better at high jump like it not really at first it did but it got to a point where it didn't like once i cleared five ten yeah. it was not beneficial see but for dunking jump i think technique I wise jump technique wise i feel like there's a point of diminishing returns i think the reason it's so beneficial for dunking is because dunking is a it's like two skills it's jump technique and then dunk technique yeah and people don't know right anybody can go and learn how to like jump high like there's but there's a difference between jumping high and then jumping high while doing i'm a not gonna dunk. lie i yes, think uh, that is me <laughs> yeah because like for like like let's take you for example yeah, this is a good this is you a jump better. high off you you jump very high off one foot even compared to a lot of like I would say one foot like dunkers. That, would, that what's are, interesting too is there's not a lot of guys like Austin and I that are under right around six foot or under because technically I'm five eleven and a half without shoes, but I don't tell people that because my spine is compressed. So maybe in the morning I'm yeah. six foot. But like let's say just six foot and under. How many one foot dunkers can you think of six foot and under that you know are as that jump as high as Austin and I and are as good at dunking as we are? Right? Like how many guys are there realistically? Yeah. Austin Eli. Austin Burke, <laughs> Austin Burke, which I said Austin and I, which really you just combine both of them. Yeah. I can't think of many other guys. Sutherland's tall as shit. J. Roth's tall as shit. Jay Clark's tall as shit. Gee. Gee's tall as shit tall. and long. Uh, there's those Westerner, Chinese dudes. The Chinese. There's two or three guys like, from China yeah, yeah, that, are, yeah. that are under. Yeah, that are freak. Um, that are long too. They have long limbs. I think. There's one guy. I don't know if you've seen him. I can send you. I, I'd have to do some research and find him. But there's a guy from Japan. Jordan did a FIBA contest against him once. Short limbs. He's probably like 5'10", 5'9". Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it's rare. The point I'm all making is it's it's pretty rare. And uh, yeah, when I'm bringing up Chi Japanese guys <laughs> that are like random, like that's how you know it's, it's rare. not common. <laughs> it's really not common to see one foot jumpers. So like, yeah, I jump just really to say like putting in perspective for one foot jumpers that are that are dunking oftentimes if you're to test people on one foot they don't they do not jump as high as what people think <laughs> like yeah. uh and so putting that in perspective like i jump high off one foot you know what i mean there's unquestionably i jump high off one foot i, I very rigorous testing 39.5 just a hair under 40 but i think i've hit days over 40 before like i said and if we were to fudge the test i'd definitely be over 40 but that all said putting in perspective dunk technique with that lens yeah so that is when i would integrate jumping every day for for a young athlete is like if you want to be a fucking dunker <laughs> yeah. like if you want to right but for a regular athlete i think i would i would implement jumping every day until their technique is perfect like if someone if i see someone that has perfect jump technique at that point i think it's just about training them properly see, I, like, yes Yes, actually, actually, I would agree with that. But I think there's still gains to be. You know, the frequency of jumping can go down at that point. I agree with that. Like, yeah, once because you, you can because you can lower the frequency. I mean, two three times a week is still a two, lot. Yeah, and even then, you can decrease the sessions. Like, to me, it's more about the quality of those sessions and your ability to retain motor patterning. So, like for me, for example, yeah. off one foot, my one foot technique power jumping is actually very good and if my hips were a little more like changed in terms of their anatomy i would it would be even better like i'd be able to get a better push off it and i'd have more speed and i'd hit higher jumps for sure and i think that if you're if you're at that point if you're at that point where you already have pretty good jump technique or whatever else like the frequency of jumping and the quality of jumping are intimately related so if you have more frequent sessions but your quality sucks then it's just, it doesn't really matter. But if you increase the yeah. quality of those sessions, like for dunking and for jump technique, if you're able to retain more within one session and you're able to learn how to learn better and you're, you're able to connect the dots better as an athlete, 
you're you need much less practice and that's something that's like so hard to teach and i talked to hunter about it because hunter had a really big day or whatever else and i've talked about it tons of times with how i increased and pr'd my right foot jump by like three inches in a week or two two weeks or something like that after years of practicing it and then going from not hitting an east bay to almost hitting an east bay basically using the same technique i used to increase my vertical by three inches and seeing that there's a very consistent <laughs> clear concise yeah. thing happening here uh over and over again in terms of coordination and again the quality just increasing drastically it, it may be way better faster like i went from not yeah. if you had a kid that was able to do that in terms of jumping every day they're going to progress way faster they don't need to jump yeah. every day but if you have someone also, that, need, that it needs to do it to learn then they're going to need more they're going to need more reps if they can't connect the dots in their head yeah also i think we should also talk about the role of low rim low rimming wait can you when it comes to jumping every yeah, day yeah i my bladder is about to explode isaiah because i just chugged coffee and if you're listening to this viewers <laughs> coffee is the key to my vertical I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I want you to discuss right, that. I will, at I will keep them entertained, keep while, them entertained while, <laughs> while I relieve myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So while John is using the bathroom, I want to talk about the importance of low rimming when it comes to jumping every day. This is something that is very, for guys that are trying to improve their dunking by jumping frequently, low rimming is something that's very neglected. And it's something that, for the guys that became really good at, at dunking and that have good dunk technique, one of the biggest reasons why that happened was because of low rimming, right? There's there's a couple of benefits to it. One, you can naturally cap the intensity and still practice the motions for whatever dunks it is that you want to hit. It is very, you're, you're not going to be jumping your highest if you're, if you're jumping every day, right? The whole idea of it is you jump every day, and then after a week, maybe a week and a half, then you take a couple of days off and there's super compensation. You start jumping higher. D when you feel like you're going to have a bad jumping day, you still want to be able to practice the motions. That's when it's a good idea to lower the rim to, to nine feet, eight feet. That way you can practice the, the dunks that you want to hit. And the lower your skill level, the lower of a rim that, that it is that you want to use. Um, so for somebody that can't dunk 10 feet, for example, I would never ask them to keep trying to dunk 10 feet. The only the only time I would ask somebody to make their sessions mainly 10 feet is if, if you're at the point where you're like back rimming it. If you're back rimming a dunk consistently, one, your motivation is going to go to shit if you're far away from dunking and you just go to get rim stuffed all day. <laughs> uh, and two is you're going to be having lower quality reps. You want to you want to practice makes when, when you're practicing dunking. Um, so that's so that's where that comes in. And then it's even more so important if you want to be like pro dunker level, if you want to be or not even that, if you want to be able to hit windmills and East base and stuff like that, you have to lower them. You're not going to get better at them by windmilling at half a second revolution per second. Like if like, and then chucking the rim at a 10 foot rim, you got to You got to practice on a height. You can make it. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a very important factor when it, when, with this dunking everyday thing, everybody has done it has practiced on low rims people have become good from it right now who is someone that you can look at and say this kid dunked every day has great dunk technique and is on his way to being a pro i know who i, I know who i have in my mind who's applied what you just said who's currently applying it or who's, who's previously applied it applied in the middle the maybe whatever i mean travis travis is one dom he jumped yeah dom dom's the one that came to another, mind for yeah. me probably immediately yeah yeah, yeah dom, actually dom is a great example he was posting he was posting freaky shit every day right he was developing jumping every day his technique what a surprise it's good as fuck <laughs> dunk oh. technique and jump technique and then he got knee yeah, pain yeah, yeah. and we were like uh let us step in <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 um so dom is a good example peter Mannion is another great example i haven't um, seen much every pro dunker how's peter doing is he jumping high right now He's doing good. He's not posting a lot, but he's right. I think right now he's just getting strong as shit. Like he's been good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, I th there's a lot of guys like that. Um, the perfect storm comes when you get a guy that's like genetically gifted for it and they, they jump every day. Even I think 
even if you have just slightly above average genetics, that's like enough to become a pro dunker. <laughs> like if you're tall and you have a, a, a little above a, a, above average genetics, if you jump every day from a young age, like you're on your way to be a pro dunker. Like think about Tom. Tom's like what, like five eight or something like that. I think he's I think he's five seven. No, he was standing next to Anthony Height in that video. He was two, at least two inches taller in that video. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, he might be. Five but anyways, eight. He might be five eight. say he's five eight, five nine. Let's say he stayed at that height. I don't think he will. I think Dom will end up being like 5'11 or 6 foot. But if he stays at that height and he just keeps getting freakier in terms of just raw athleticism and output, I think he has potential to be a pro dunker because his hands are unbelievable. <laughs> like His yeah. hands are unbelievable. His jump technique is perfect. And he has a decent predisposition for RFD. Like. I can get you more powerful. I can get you stronger. I can get you faster. I can get you more explosive than, than any other coach can probably do on the planet, you know? And if you have the basis of what he has in place, I don't see why there's yeah. any reason that he couldn't achieve his goal of being a pro dunker. It's just going to yeah. be with the also, lens of, yeah, you might not do a 360 East Bay, but like you're five, eight doing a East Bay, you know, it's, it's people look at that. Yeah. They look at your height. Also, there's a big correlation between guys that, like have great hands and great jump technique that are basketball players. If you have an extensive basketball background of playing from a young age, you most likely jumped a shit ton. And then you most likely did ball handling drills. Like you have the technique to put the ball between your legs and go behind the back. Cause like, like there's a drill I used to do. It's called around the world. I, the coaches I've, I've literally been doing the drill since I started playing basketball at nine years old. You go on your head, around your waist, around your knees as fast as you can. That's literally the same technique as when you're doing a behind the back dunk. And they, they used to have me do a, a figure eight drill where you go between your legs as fast as you can in a figure eight, like stuff like that. So there's a big transfer of skill from, from basketball and dunking. The challenge comes when you get a guy that doesn't have a basketball background and they don't have a background of jumping every day on top of that. And then that's that's when it's harder to implement like like this stuff when later in life. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like we yeah. have covered it pretty thoroughly. I guess in short, should you jump every day? Generally speaking, no. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably past that point where you would have benefited from doing that. And I wouldn't recommend it. You know, if you're in this 15, 16 range, maybe you could try just doing nothing but jumping. Yeah. Start at five times every day and then go to I'll ten times every day, but. I don't even know if I would do that. If I'd you're pre puberty, how about that? Yeah. I think the more injury resilient you are, the more frequently you can jump. Does that mean you should dunk every day? No. It just means you can probably practice a little. You can have maybe more sessions or longer sessions. That's, that's really the thing that I think this whole podcast can be summed up with is and I'm sure some of you guys will tag us and be like, You don't have to listen to any of it, just click on thirty seven forty three. <laughs> but <laughs> basically that if you're more injury resilient, you can have more sessions with more jumps in them. If you're less injury resilient, then you need fewer sessions with less jumping. And part of that is your age. Part of that is your pathology, how progressed into it you are. And we tell people like, you know, if you're, if you need to have more sessions and you want to not train, like that's fine. I wouldn't, if you're over the age of 18, I would, or really I'd say post puberty, if you're 16 on, because most people have hit puberty by 16, you shouldn't be having more than maximum three sessions a week, but more like more than likely not probably two sessions a week is like even too much. Um, not, not too much. It just depends yeah. on what, what cycling you're on. Like with us, there's a lot of different setups that you can do. And there's one specifically that I like to do for guys. Um, that's like more frequent dunk sessions because of this reason. Exactly. Like everything we yeah. just talked about, <laughs> like for people that are a little less injury resilient, but want to dunk a little bit more frequently there's a setup that I have been working on and, and finalizing and kind of dialing in over the last, I don't even know, I would say two or three years, actually, honestly. And then there's other setups where it's like, Hey, you know, you can just train your balls off and jump whenever you want or as much as you can. Cause you're a super injury resilient and I'm not worried about you. And it just, it just kind of depends yeah. on where you're at in that progression. There's some guys that just need to get more powerful and stronger and more athletic. And for them training all out is generally the best answer. So I mean, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get a cap, but generally speaking, more injury resilient you are, more you can dunk. <laughs> yeah. Would not recommend I jumping every day. I think over the course of from the age of 16 to 19, 
I think if you were to put like an average sessions I had, it would is probably like three point two. Like 3. I probably 2. had three point two sessions. And he per still week. had knee pain. <laughs> yeah. So maybe two point five is the answer. Maybe yeah. slightly <laughs> less than that, which is really but what I said. Two to three. <laughs> basically, yeah. You can get way better at dunking having two to three sessions a week. You'll be fine. If you're injury if you don't have pain, like I think that's all you really need. I want to dunk so bad today, Zay, but it is snowing and I cannot get out of my like there's no way I can get to the gym to dunk. And I'm just so so sad about it. It makes me want to buy a truck or move. <laughs> it's okay. I have to do slow strength today. So. Guess what I have to do today? Slow well, strength. <laughs> hey, the slow strength game. <laughs> because I have no other option, and now I have to push my dunk session back to like Wednesday, like you. I'll probably be on the same setup you are this week, actually. Do you yeah. think I'll East Bay this week? On night 10? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I honestly think I can. You have to. I think I can do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so hyped. All right, guys. Well, with that all said, I feel like we uh, can stop at a good place here. This one was a good one, actually. I actually, I love the podcast, but I, specifically when Zay and I kind of keep it more free flowing, it's a lot more fun for us and it's yeah. more relaxed, it's more fun for us. Usually educational. We bring more anecdote into it. Some of these other ones are more like lectures, like when you're in a classroom and you can learn a lot more, but I yeah. still, I still love these ones. Anyways, thanks for listening guys. Make sure that you like comment, subscribe on YouTube or on the podcast streaming services. I always say this, but I'm pretty good about getting back within the first 24 hours. So if you're listening to this and you're at this point, go ahead, ask a question. It could be on related to the podcast or not. It helps the algorithm, helps us out, and we will catch you on tomorrow's episode. Peace out, guys.